So what we're focusing on today is we're focusing on random samples and surveys. And this you'll see a lot in terms of things like politics and uh, a lot of products that try and sell you on things. They'll want to make sure that they do it in a biased way to make sure that you vote one way or another. So it's really important to understand this just for your daily life and how uh, a survey can be biased directly or deliberately. So if you look here as an example here, um, see here, you want to find out how many people in your community are vegetarian. Where would be the best place to take a survey? <clears throat> so if you wanted to do that, obviously there's going to be some places where you don't want to take the survey. You don't want to take the survey outside of a steakhouse or something like that. You you could go ahead and take a survey in a bunch of different places. You wouldn't want to do it outside of a whole, um, a whole foods where people might be more likely to be vegetarian. Um, so I would just say something along the lines of taking it at the library, taking it at some sort of thing. So uh, a place like the library would be a perfectly good reason, or a good place to be. Or a place like, oh, I don't know, going to a, um, a baseball game or something like that where there's not a direct and deliberate um, way that you can see that the data is skewed one way or another. Now, where it says here, in each question, is in each question, is it biased or fair? So it says here, will you vote for the young inex inexperienced candidate, Mr. Sung, or the experienced candidate, Mrs. Lopez? So in most cases here, people want experienced people to be uh, to be the person that they elect. So this here, this term here, it biases it towards Mrs. Lopez, and this term here, it biases it against Mr. Song. So that's the reason why this would be a biased question, which means that it's an attempt to try and make you go one way or the other. This one down here, will you vote for Mr. Sung or Miss Lopez? That there isn't biased. That's just, you know, it doesn't say anything about them. It just says uh, one of them is named Mr. Sung, one of them is named Miss Lopez. Uh, certainly if you have... Um, if you have a bunch of people who just want to vote for women, then they might be more likely to vote for Miss Lopez. But you're not directly and deliberately attempting to do a biased statement um, where it's providing an, op an opinion or some sort of way of actually looking at people um, so that they can go ahead and base your, their opinion kind of on yours. So down here it says here, you plan to survey people to see what percent own their home and what percent rent. Tell whether the following will give you a random sample and explain. It says here, you interview people outside a pool supply store in the suburbs. So think about that for a second here. Who would own pools? And you're looking to figure out how many people rent and how many people own their homes. So this one here, this sample here is, it's not random. And the reason why it's not random is because most people with pools with, or at least they're taking care of pools, own their homes. As opposed to most people without pools don't own their homes. It says here, you interview people near in the street, near an apartment complex. Well there, you're going to get a lot of people that are from the apartment building, probably. So this would be not random because many people from the apartments, from the apartments. Now this last one here, email survey to the 20th person in the phone book. Now that one there seems like it might be more random because there's no way of actually going ahead and if you do it right just every 20th person you mail a survey. You might not get a lot of surveys back from people, but at the same time it would be a random amount of people that you might end up with getting surveys from. So that's an example of how this works and we're done.